Hi again, this is Rich from WorkshopAddict.com and this is tutorial number two for SketchUp. I'm using 2013 but this will apply to previous versions as well. As I would mentioned in the first uh, tutorial we want to go to our model info right off the bat and change our precision down to uh, uh, probably the, the lowest possible precision that you can get away with in that drawing. There's no reason to snap to um, to finer precisions uh, if you really don't need it. In this case we're going to work with eighth inch. We can also turn on uh, length snapping. I'm not going to do that at this time but uh, you can do that if that's your uh, preference. We're going to go through the toolbar items here one at a time and I'm going to break that down into maybe four or five at a time. I tried to do it all at once and ended up with a video that was two hours long and that's uh, just too long for uh, uh, for one session. So we're just going to go through a few. The uh, uh, first item is the select tool. That's what you would use to select something within your drawing. We can be in the middle of something else like uh, drawing with our line tool and if we hit the space bar you'll notice it took us back to select. We can be uh, in the uh, rotate tool anything like that space bar takes us right back to select. Uh, if you can uh, get in the habit of using the space bar that will uh, speed up your drawing time. The next three items make component uh, paint bucket which is a materials uh, tool and the eraser we really can't use without having something on the screen. So I'm going to start off by drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to come down here to my origin. I'm going to start moving you know the direction I want to go and I want to make a uh, a four inch square so I'm going to type in four comma four and you'll notice that in the bottom right and hit enter and now we've got a tiny little box down here that's uh, four comma four and we can zoom in on that we can use the toolbars or if you've got a three button mouse which uh, I highly recommend uh, you can just uh, scroll that mouse in and, uh, and get closer and that works a lot easier. The first uh, item after select is make component but you'll notice it's grayed out and the reason is we don't have anything selected so if I drag a box around this and select it it's now available. I typically don't use the toolbar item and the reason uh, I don't is because I normally make groups. Um, sometimes you want to make a component if it's going to be used throughout your drawing. The nice thing about a component is when you edit that component it edits all the other identical components with you and I'll show you how that works. But I normally just right click and do uh, make component. See there's make group down there. So since I'm used to going there for make group I normally just do that. But we'll go ahead and use the toolbar item and when we do that we get a box that pops up asking for a name or description. Uh, you can type a unique name in and some information to kind of give you a, a hint about it. Uh, say for instance if you would created a component that was for left hand such and such you might want to uh, type a little detail in there so you know for sure. I'm just going to leave the defaults and click create we now have a component and I want to show you the difference between a component and a group. I'm going to go draw another box uh, starting on this axis up here and I'm going to type 4 comma 4 again hit spacebar to select I'm going to right click and make it a group. So now we have two different objects on the screen that look exactly the same um, and I'm going to show you what the difference is. I'm going to drag a box around both of those and I'm going to make another copy across the screen. Move across here. And um, I'm going to go up here on the top and I'm going to double click this to put it in edit mode. This means we're editing this particular group. So now that I have a box around it and I'm in edit mode, I'm going to hit the uh, P for pull and we'll talk about that later and I'm gonna start pulling up you know pushing is going down pulling's up they're basically the same thing so I'm gonna go in the start moving in the direction I want and I'm gonna type in 0.5 
you'll notice we now have a um, a group up here that is now um, half inch thick. We'll go over to this one and pull it up and I'm going to type in one. So it's an inch thick. So we got two different items up there with different thicknesses. Now if I go down here to this component, double click that, hit P for pull and start to pull it up, you'll notice that the one on the right pulls up with it. So if I type in 0.5 I now have a a piece of plate that's half inch thick. Anytime I edit that, let's say I go in here and I draw a line on this one, it drew it on the right one as well. I can push that away. We now have two identical objects. So what happens if you've got a uh, a whole drawing full of components and you just want to change one because say it's the the last component um, in your project that that may be on the bottom and it's a little different or if you were creating trusses in a house and and you got one on the end uh, that has a little longer tail on it for whatever reason but you don't want to change everything well what you can do is let's make a copy of this again. So now, now we have uh, three uh, three components that are exactly the same, and you'll notice they're still uh, they're still connected together because they're the same component. If we go over here, pick any one of these, right click it, and make unique. That basically made a another component and it numbered it differently so it's actually got a different name so if we go in here now and we decide that we want to uh, uh, edit that excuse me edit that uh, component we can do so and it uh, it changed that particular component but it didn't change the other ones because we made that unique but if we go back here and we do something on this component, you'll notice it's still doing it on the first because uh, those are not unique components. They're a component, and anything you do to one is going to happen to the uh, to the rest. So that's basically the uh, main difference between a group and a component. Uh, you definitely want to make everything a group or a component or it will stick together and uh, cause you all kinds of problems. Not to mention, uh, it's hard to work. Let's, uh, let's explode this. And when you explode it, it removes its component or group status and puts it back to just plain entities. Another problem if you don't do that is, okay, say we want to move this. I click M for move and I start to move it. I'm just moving that face. So if you wanted to make a parallelogram, you could you could definitely do it that way. But you can go in here, and I could start to move, and see how it's pulling that out of shape. Uh, or if I double click it and I go in edit mode, I mean I just deleted that one corner which removed the bottom and and right face here. So if you want to do that, that's fine more than likely you don't I mean you're you're gonna treat treat these items like they're materials you would uh, work with in your shop let's get rid of that notice I hit delete and it just got rid of the uh, one entity so everything is just separate here now let's drag a box around it and hit delete and get rid of all of it the next item on the uh, on the uh, toolbar is the uh, paint bucket which is material tool here's our material palette uh, a lot of times you might want to leave that up and a little tip on the toolbars if you click the top it will collapse the palette uh, I run dual monitors so I normally have my palette set up on the other monitor but if you're running a single monitor which most people are you may not want to close that every time you may just want to minimize that panel so we've got different options in here for 
asphalt, blinds, brick, cladding, carpet, colors, uh, metal, wood. Let's pick metal here. We can go in and use our paint tool and paint different uh, different materials. We can jump over here to wood, pick a wood, and uh, paint something. One of the things, if you don't want to paint the whole object, say you just want to paint a side, like this is going to be actually painted uh, black on one side, you can double click that uh, so you're in edit mode and paint just an individual surface once you're in edit mode. If you're not in edit mode with that box around it, whatever you pick is going to uh, uh, paint the uh, entire entire object. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to mention about uh, the uh, materials at this point is uh, you can select in model once you get all your materials figured out what you're going to use a certain type of wood or a certain type type of metal if you click in model it will only list the materials that you've used in your model and wood and colors and metals will be all combined so once you get that figured out instead of jumping through all the different wood and metal and concrete pallets you just go to the ones in the model and 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 paint it that way there's a lot more you can do here as far as uh, editing uh, materials which uh, I think will probably be a complete different tutorial so we won't uh, we won't jump into that right now there's just too much in here the next item I'll go ahead and close that that I want to talk about is the eraser tool um, you'll notice earlier I erased some stuff by uh, just selecting it and hitting the delete key that does work sometimes uh, when you're uh, creating custom things and you want to remove uh, certain entities uh, this just works a little better when you collect the eraser tool you get a little circle on uh, the bottom left of it and whoops I deleted the whole thing because we weren't in the edit mode so let's double click this get in the edit mode go back to the eraser I can go in and individually delete these uh, items here. So that's the eraser tool and there may be times that as I'd mentioned uh, um, when you're creating custom things that you want to go in and, and uh, say for instance let's push this part way down. If we wanted to go in well, it's probably going to break our face, but you can see how we if we click that, it removes, you know, just that uh, particular line entity. So that's uh, that's the eraser eraser tool, and and uh, I don't use it too often for the kind of stuff I create, but uh, it is available. Uh, delete key works uh, works similar, but there's times when uh, this uh, is the uh, perfect uh, perfect tool okay uh, let's get rid of this stuff on our screen the uh, rectangle tool which we already talked about um, you know we can we can either pull to the exact uh, dimension we want by looking at the dimension box on the bottom right but I would highly recommend you just type in the dimension uh, with a comma in between the length and width. Um, you never know which way you're pulling on the axis and it can be confusing whether the first one is the width or the height. So what I normally do is let's say for instance we wanted to uh, we were going to draw um, a 2 by 4 and we needed to start out with a inch and a half by 3 and a half inch rectangle. I'll pull it out and make it skinny and long so I can tell which way we're going and if you look at the dimension box on the bottom right it says three quarter by three and five eighths so we know that our narrow width is the first one so if I type in 1.5 comma 3.5 I'll end up with a uh, with a uh, 
inch and a half by three and a half inch rectangle rectangle the other option if you choose to do it um, and uh, sometimes it's easier you know I don't know all my fractions down to 32nd and 64th you know quarter and eighth and and 16th I do but uh, you get uh, get beyond that and I can't really remember them normally just because it's easier for me if I want to type in uh, three and a quarter I'll put in 3.25 but you can type in uh, you can type in three and one well I guess I got to get on my rectangle tool here I hit the space bar um, you could type in three one forward slash four comma two five slash eight and we end up with a three and a quarter by two and five eighths so you can you can mix those up I normally type in decimals if I can but if I end up with something something weird uh, like uh, you know say uh, uh, 930 seconds and I can't remember the decimal equivalent I'll go ahead and type in uh, 930 seconds let's go ahead and make this a group we're gonna pull it up just to uh, use this as uh, kind of a guide I'm gonna use my center scroll button click down and orbit around so I can get this in kind of the view I want the next tool that we're gonna talk about here is the uh, pencil tool um, this will draw something on a face and uh, and and uh, except we weren't on the face there I was gonna show you this uh, um, a little screw up next but uh, but I can show you on this notice how it went out the front so let's back up get rid of that you gotta be careful see it says on face a group on face a group on face on face so basically we are on the face so we're drawn on on uh, along, along our green axis here so that's fine but what I was going to show you um, with the screw up and I'll do it again here when you draw if when you draw you need to stay on your axis there's just no other way to do it see we're on the red axis here so we can go across and we can come up here and it gives us a little blue line as well as says on blue axis on red axis on blue on red on green well actually green's going to take us in a direction we didn't want to go so let me back up I want to make sure I stay stay on my axis and one thing that you'll know if you've done it right when you come back and click the last point it filled in that uh, that object we were drawing it filled it in so it completed it so we knew it was on all on the uh, the same plane let's get rid of that and let's go back and goof again so we come across here and we start to draw and uh, say we want to draw down at an angle and come down here like this and we come up here and click and you'll notice it didn't didn't complete the box and fill it in and the reason why is although from a 2D perspective we kinda look like we've got a funny looks like an axe handle but when we start to rotate this you're gonna see that see exactly what happened here notice how we've got we've got uh, we did pretty good to start on that plane but it jumped out here on a totally different axis so you gotta be real careful when you're drawing to make sure that that you stay on an axis I mean follow the indicators on the screen red blue red blue red 
one thing that we do know that you can keep in mind is say for instance we wanted to come back to this this corner we already know this is on the same plane we're drawing on so we don't have to worry about this line being on a red uh, blue or green axis we can come back and click to that corner because we know it's on that same plane and when we come up here it finishes up we can look around behind it and see that it's that it's on that uh, on that correct plane so anyhow be very careful that you stay on axis it's just you just uh, it's unbelievable if you just start clicking out here I mean it looks like we're doing something but when you take a look at it well I got lucky there um, it completed you just uh, like I said you just never know where you're going with that that thing and and when we spin around here you're gonna see that that thing was just all over the place so so anyhow stick to your axis alright I think uh, that's probably probably enough for this lesson you can kinda play around with that a little bit and uh, I'm gonna uh, work on uh, the next set of tools that you can uh, can go through and and we'll follow along there but I want to try to keep these uh, lessons a little shorter than uh, the first one and uh, definitely shorter than that two hour one that I tried to do all the tools in. that's just not gonna work so uh, stick around and uh, we'll have the uh, next lesson up uh, shortly